This is FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. The death of former British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher has U.S. media crediting the so-called Iron Lady with bringing her country back from the brink of catastrophe. Thatcher's austerity policies were praised, unsurprisingly, on Fox News, but the same night, PBS, the supposedly liberal network, featured a panel discussion that was every bit as tilted to the right as Bill O'Reilly's. What you're hearing, practically everywhere, is that Thatcher turned the British economy around. Unemployment plunged on her watch, O'Reilly said. Britain's economy rebounded from her tough medicine, according to PBS's Margaret Warner. David Ignatius of the Washington Post declared that she took down the British class system. But, as the London Guardian shows, Unemployment shot up during the Thatcher years and was higher when she left office in 1990 than when her term began. Poverty was way up, so was inequality. And Britain's economic growth was only slightly higher than during the previous nightmare decade. But elite media see things differently. Here's John Burns of the New York Times. She put the country back on a trajectory an upward tra tra trajectory. The Britain I grew up in, uh, in the wake of the Second World War, was a country which was in precipitous decline, mm -hmm. which had entirely lost its national self-confidence, and Mrs. Thatcher put that right. People who suffered during the Thatcher years disagree. We're not hearing much from them in corporate media conversations. The Obama White House unveiled a budget plan that's getting a lot of media attention because it included cuts to Social Security and Medicare. And you can learn a lot about corporate media's worldview by the way they're presenting that as Obama capturing the center. Here's NPR's Koki Roberts. This is a, this is a move toward the middle, uh, to getting those independent voters who he lost in the last election and the Democrats would like to get back. But if cutting Social Security and Medicare is the center, there aren't many people there. According to a Washington Post poll, just 17 percent support cuts to Medicare. 21 percent say that for Social Security. Yet media tell us both sides don't like the plan. As Dan Boltz of the Washington Post puts it, quote, it is a budget designed to satisfy neither congressional Republicans nor his party's left flank, close quote. For pundits, that's the clearest signal that a politician's doing something right. Extremists on both sides are unhappy. But this idea that support for overwhelmingly popular programs is an extreme position, or that there's this large center calling for cuts to Social Security, that's more a corporate media delusion than anything else. Finally, it is, according to the calendar, April of 2013. So naturally, it's time to start handicapping the 2016 presidential race. And how would we do that? Monitor Hillary Clinton's haircut. During a Meet the Press roundtable, Politico reporter Maggie Haberman was asked to talk about signals from Clinton, a book deal, speeches, and yes, her appearance. You are seeing sort of a new hairstyle on Hillary Clinton. I got a lot of pushback on talking about that, but the reality is Hillary Clinton has dealt with this kind of thing for years. She has turned it into a joke. Haberman explained that she wasn't alone. That very day, the New York Times columnist Maureen Dowd had written that Clinton's, quote, new haircut sends a signal of shimmering intention. She has ditched the skinned back bun that gave her the air of a KGB villainess in a Bond movie and has a sleek new layered cut that looks modern and glamorous, close quote. As if it weren't bad enough that media are already in campaign speculation season, some of them have decided to start out with their worst stuff. I'm Janine Jackson. This is FAIR TV.